good to be in the house of God. I turn in the Word of God to the book of to the book of Matthew, chapter four. Matthew, chapter four. We'll be speaking for a few moments this, this evening on the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just stand with me, if you would. We'll read a few verses of scripture. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, thank you. All right. Hello. <laughs> then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted forty days and forty nights, he afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now the two more times the devil tempted him, I will stop reading right there and have prayer and then I will pick those other two things up. But this was amazing to me as I came across this this morning preaching about guardian angels from Psalm 91 and it's amazing thing to me that the devil knew Psalm 91 right in the temptation of Christ on the mountain. He is throwing that temptation and using the scripture of Psalm 91, which meant he knew what that was because he was way back in heaven when the word of God was already penned when he was on the throne as the, as the chief, uh, chief angel, the God himself, had created Lucifer before the fall. Isn't that amazing? That just brings to light that great scripture forever, O Lord. Thy word is settled in heaven because the devil knew it before he ever came down to the garden of Eden. Let's pray and I'll preach for a few moments. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to, to cast and feast our eyes and hearts upon the sacred pages of the word of God. Oh, what an account, what information that you saturated in the word of God for preachers to preach and people to read it see and hear and know and understand and lord thank you for the enlightenment of the uh, of the holy spirit lighting our our and illuminating us so we can understand and see the word of god and to know that our very savior was tempted in all points like we in his human form down upon the earth yet without sin thank you for the wonderful life of the lord jesus and for his sacrifice at the cross and I pray now you would help this message to be a blessing to us. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray, amen. Please be seated. The Lord Jesus left the splendors of heaven and came down to earth for one reason. He was born to die. He fulfilled that. He is not about getting for himself. He's all about getting. And the scriptures just prior to that in chapter 3, the Lord Jesus was baptized, went down into a water to be baptized as an example for us. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. And when Jesus was baptized, a voice from heaven came down and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And by the way, Jesus Christ, from the, from the birth in the manger to the point of beginning of his ministry had not done any miracles to that point. Okay? Some of 
the apocryphal books, which are not canonical, that tell stories of Jesus uh, making little clay birds and them flying away and making all the kids jealous, those things. Those books are not canonical. Those things never happen. The first miracle Jesus did was at the marriage cana of Galilee, and it was right after the temptation and after his baptism. So I want to tell you, when he was baptized that and came out, he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now there's one thing that you and I have got to understand. The devil is not omnipresent like God is. Jesus Christ himself was tempted by the devil himself. I'm glad he don't hang around me. Aren't you glad he didn't hang around you? But his influence is all there. His little demonic angels, uh, we talked about those fallen angels, and that evil influence is everywhere all around us. So we've got to be careful of those, those spirits. They're not of God. He said, try the spirits, whether they're of God or not. And so we can have to be very, very careful. But you know what? When it comes to temptation, the person you and I have to be so careful about that it's not the devil and it's not his angels out there, the fallen angels. It's our own selves. Because it is our eyes and our ears and our lust and our flesh that desires in the sin cursed body the sin and temptation upon us. And by the way, God said to us, and that's another sermon within itself, there's no temptation given you among men whereby he's made a way of escape, says uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15. And so we know that he delivers us from temptation. And James tells us how to totally overcome temptation. It says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and God will draw nigh to you. And that's what we talked about this morning. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High is under the very shadow of Almighty God. And so he was led up into the wilderness to be tempted. Forty days and forty nights he was there on the mountain. And after that 40 days and 40 <laughs> nights, he was at the weakest point of his life, and he hungered. And now comes the tempter, the devil. Came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, and what does that remind you? So many people out there, if the Bible is real, if there is a God, if Jesus Christ is the Son of God, cast him down upon the Savior. And now, as Satan was approaching Jesus from the humanistic point of view, yes, he is all God, but he's also all man. He had feelings like you and I. He had the, he had the, the physical body. He had to become like us in that physical body. Yet he was without sin because the God part kept him from sin. But I want you to know that his flesh hungered. And so he said, if you're the son of God, make these stones to be bread. And he answered, and by the way, every time the, the, every time the devil tried to tempt him, Jesus always fought it by the quoting of scripture. That's why it's so important to get the word of God into your life and put the word of God right back into the face of the devil. Put the word of God right back into the face of the world. And you know, like I said this morning, I don't have to defend this book. This book defends me. Uh, and my Bible says, in the beginning God, and man in the beginning God. Amen? Is there any, is there any doubt about what that is? He created the heavens and the earth. That's what God said. I don't care who denies it or who will not believe it. It never changed the truth one degree. And so Jesus was hungry and the devil said, if thou be the son of God, 
Make these stones to be bread. I know you can do miracles, and if you're the Son of God, make these. You see, he wanted him to try to prove he was the Son of God. Jesus doesn't have to prove he's the Son of God because he is the Son of God. And once again, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. Yes, he was hungry. Yes, bread was the number one thing he needed to, subs to sustain his body. But he said, I need something more than bread. Life is more than bread. It's more than water. It's by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And if Jesus said that, do not you think he was obligated to give us every word from the mouth of God in this book that I'm preaching from today? Yes, he gave us the words in the Bible, Bible the canonical word of God that we should know. Okay, we try to figure out and get add, uh, add thing. I will show you in a few moments how the devil adds. And so Jesus then uh, saved him all. But he answered and said that, and shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now this is interesting. Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, can I tell you the devil don't give up? There it is again. I couldn't get you to put your emphasis upon you being the son of God. Jesus put the emphasis upon I'm, I am the word of God from heaven. He didn't have to prove it then. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written. See, Satan knew it is written. That's what Satan said. It is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Does that sound familiar? A little bit familiar, but did you notice? It wasn't quite the same as I preached today because the devil added some things to the scripture. But one thing he knew, Psalm 91 was written. It was written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest now look at these three little words. At any time. That's on what the Bible said this morning when I preached Psalm 91. He said, Thou shalt, they shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. But the devil was trying to convince Jesus that this was a special time because he was involved in that. Lest at any time, that's the time that I'm here with you now. This is all about me. And by the way, the devil is all about himself. He's the most hung up, stuck up thing on himself. He's in love with himself. And he loves the power of God. And all he wanted to do is to be like him. He tried to mock Jesus to do every good thing Jesus did. He tried to turn it into wickedness and lie. And guess what? He found out. I will be like the Most High. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set upon the side of the north. I will declare my myself. I will be like the Most High. He even got himself a trinity. We know all about the devil, the Antichrist, and the false prophet in the last days to be deceived is the trinity of the devil. Because God's trinity works. We know about God's trinity, that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and Jesus came down and died to save the world, and then the Holy Spirit came. 
to indwell every believer. And then God, that's God's strategy. It works like a smooth oiled machine without fail. The only thing that makes it fail is our doubt and our ignorance concerning the doctrine of the Trinity. He had the answer. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he'll give his angels charge over thee. Jesus knew all about that. Jesus said to him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Oh, wow. You're not going to tempt me. I am your God. I am your creator. But it was written. And also the devil knew that because the scripture again, the whole book was in heaven already. And so he said, it is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil taken them up to an exceeding high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. By the way, the same things that he's showing Jesus is what he already made. Isn't that something? He wants to give him his own product. <laughs> I cannot even imagine the stupidity of the devil getting into a war with God to start with his insanity and to think of any way, shape, or form that you'll ever come out a winner is an impossibility. I've read the end of the story. I know where the devil ends up. I know where his trinity ends up. In the lake of fire. And I also know where everyone that follows his enemies ends up. The same place. They go there by choice. They showed him all the glory of the kingdoms and said, all these things I give thee. Hey, Satan, they're not yours to give. I've already made them and I own them and I occupy them. You have nothing to give me. You have nothing to offer me and everything for the devil is a lie. He has nothing to offer you young people. He has nothing to ever offer you but destruction and bitterness and disappointment and damnation. That's what he has to offer. Now it's the hundred and believe that he's conversing with Jesus himself. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. You know what he loved? He loved the way people worship God. And you know what? I love the way people worship God too. Amen. That's what we're doing here tonight. We're worshiping God. If you watch people worship me, what do we want? We want to do things Jesus would say. Some of our modern uh, theological Proverbs, as they rewrote Isaiah chapter 14 about the fall of Lucifer from heaven. Change the words to how art thou fallen from heaven, O morning star. And if you look at Revelation chapter 22 at the very end of it, Jesus Christ is the bright and the morning star. I am the root of David, the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. And the writers of today's new Bibles have Jesus falling from heaven and Satan upon the throne. God help us. Just for changing the little words. That's what Satan did. He added to the word. Lest at any time Thou dash thy foot against the stone. And the very Garden of Eden, Eve also, when the Satan approached about the fruit, she also added to the word of God. Said, God said not to eat of that nor touch it. Can I tell you, if you remember the Bible, 
God didn't say don't touch it. God said don't eat it. And God puts a strong warning now for those who take words out of the word of God and add words into the word of God. You don't add to the word of God and you don't take away from the word of God. That's why at Temple Baptist Church, when you come here, you're going to get the word of God with full effect. Because we have a Bible that is the word of God. And again, Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I like this, then the, de then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. He was so weak, he was almost at the point of physical death. And what Satan was trying to do was kill him before he could get to the cross. Just killing him. But it didn't work. Angels came and ministered. You know, Satan knew all about all about the angels, the guardian angels. He knew all about those legions and principalities and powers that he turned against God and swept them away to a Christless eternity. Some of them, when they fell out of heaven, he said they were so wicked and vile that God wouldn't even let them reach them on the earth. God himself locked them and chained them down into hell, said Jesus, they're so wicked they could Hell gives up the dead. Those, those spirits are, uh, are going to come, come towards you. They're going to be right where the devil is, in the lake of fire. I'm glad it's the guardian angels. I told you the story this morning how at six years old, I drowned. And God brought me back. Miracle when I was six years old. I also promised if you come tonight, I'd tell you two more. So with the time I've got left, I'm going to give you two more. All right? I was 10 years old when this happened to me. We lived on a, right on a country road. By the way, I lived on a lot of country roads in my <laughs> young time. Take me home, country road. <laughs> I have some bad, some bad memories about country roads, and you know, West Virginia is a great place to be bombed. I don't, uh, I don't covet the country road taking me home. Uh, amen, Mama. <laughs> I, I don't, uh, I don't covet that. But we lived on the country road, just a little two lane. You know, the roads are narrow, two lanes, and people. Was, man, remember when the speed limits were seventy miles an hour? Way, way back then, wow, and especially on country roads. And uh, I was 10 years old. God watched over me and saved my life and spared me. And I knew I had a guardian angel when I was six years old before I ever trusted Jesus. Because as a three-year-old boy, I trusted the Lord. And God, of course, knew my future, did he not? And at 10 years old, Right after I was saved, this happened to me right after I was saved. It was right on this busy country road, and our house was right by the road. We had a large backyard, and me and my brothers and some friends were playing uh, baseball in the backyard. And I was a fielder. I was, I was in the field, up, and they were batting from down, down below, and the ball was coming up, up toward the house. It was located right on the road. And so one of those friends hit a, 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 a line drive and it went over my head. He hit the ball right straight toward the house and it missed the house and landed and rolled across the road. Well, I'm in hot pursuit of this ball when it goes over my head and I'm not paying much attention. And I, here I am running after that ball with my, with my eyes on that ball and I'm crossing the road and went across the lane going this way, and just as I got to the lane the, on the oncoming traffic, I noticed in my peripheral vision a car fastly driving. He was flying. And 
while I was running, remember how big the fenders were on the old cars? Bang! It hit me and knocked me all the way back across my my lane, and I was laying in the yard in my front yard from the impact of that car. He must he thought he was had a wide open wide open freedom. I I didn't know what hit me. I did not see him. He did not see me. I was looking at the ball and he was looking at the road. And when he stopped the car way up there and backed up, I was laying on my front yard in the grass. And I shook myself and tumbled up. I jumped up, stretched my arms and my legs. I didn't even have a broken bone. I didn't feel no pain and no hurt. I examined myself, and that man was shook to the core, and he, he, he thought he was kidding. And I thought, I'm okay. Go back in the car, and I, I want to get back to the ball game. <laughs> after that, yeah, after that, I wasn't hurt at all. But here is where my guardian angel <coughs> came into effect when I was running across and entering his lane and that front fender hit me had I been advanced one step farther I would have been run over drugged crushed without without question dead I would have been a dead single old boy there's no way in the world I would have ever survived being hit on that speed limit on that road if I had taken one step farther. God knew how fast to let my legs go and how slow that they were. Amen. He knew that I wasn't looking. And guess what? That guardian angel just kind of probably dangled by the shirt by the belt or something. Yeah, I wouldn't take that kind of step. The destruction came. I knew I had a guardian angel. I was 10 years old. Right after I was saved, God had a plan for my life. The next time I realized I had a guardian angel was I was 22 years old. Judy and I had been married two years, and we were expecting our firstborn daughter, Rhonda. Judy was carrying Rhonda. My little grandmother Joan had come from West Virginia up to Lynchton to visit the family. And she had come on a Greyhound bus. That was a long trip. And she said, I can't go back that way. And she implored the family, will somebody in the family take, take, take me back home, just drive me back home. So the family got together and Judy and I were drafted to do it, and we volunteered, and she was expecting Rhonda as a child. Now, on the road from Michigan all the way down, you know, most of the four lanes, expressway, highways, it's a boom, fast, easy travel. But when you get down to, down to Columbus, Ohio, uh, about that Gretchen City, it's always bypass Columbus. There's Columbus. There's a little road called Hamilton Road. Some of you may get on that road. And when we got down there, we got on that road, two-lane Hamilton Road, and we were going. I don't know how long we've been on Hamilton Road. The speed limit, by the way, was 70 miles an hour then, back then. And we were making good time, and all of a sudden, I, got, I thought, I'm going to pass that semi-truck because I don't know, he must have been going to speed 65 or maybe maybe 70 miles an hour. We just did. And I was going the same speed, but I wanted to get around him. And, and there was no solid line, there was just clear, clearance. I pulled.
pulled out into that lane and I started driving. You know how long the semi truck is. Now he's pulling like, like all that speed and I'm going that speed and here I am. I'm making some headway on him and I finally get up about halfway to the side of him and, and I'm thinking, man, th this guy's not slowing down. He's not going to let me in. And, and he didn't. He just kept the same speed. I kept the same speed and all of a sudden I looked coming head on and there was a car flying head on at me. And I'm thinking, I've got to decide in a hurry. Am I going to floor this thing and can I get up ahead enough to get around him? I, I tried for a little while to pass him and couldn't get ahead of him. He kept speeding up as I sped up. And all of a sudden, there was a curve way down there. That car whipped around that curve. And here he came. But on the left of the road, there was a big, deep ditch. The field. That car is coming. And so I found out as I'm trying to decide can I go and pass him or can I fall back and fall behind him to a safe zone. And I found out I could not do either one before that head on car on that little two lane traffic was coming and he was flying in my face. I tried to drop back. Couldn't get back. The semi truck did not speed up. He was right in my face at 70 miles an hour. And I said, Honey, hang on. I've got to go to the ditch. Because the only option I had was to cut off to keep from being crushed. And that semi truck was right that far from me the other way. <laughs> I'm just, here he comes, and right in my face, and I said, hang on, and I started to cut the wheel to go off. One said, two said, Ron, get over, the semi-truck is gone. I didn't even look, I just cut. Man, hit the brake and pull off the side of the road. We looked ahead, and there was no semi-truck. We looked behind, and there was no semi-truck. What happened to the semi-truck? What happened to the 18-wheeler? There was right by the side of me when I was ready to cut it. What happened? I shook my belief. I, I know we could have all been killed. Rhonda would have never been born. The ministry would have never happened. My little grandmother Joan would have made an early exit to meet the Lord. You say, what happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Either that semi-truck faded into thin air or God just picked him up and put him someplace else on the highway. Yeah. How many of you have ever gone on a trip and don't remember the trip? Oh, yeah. The semi-truck was not an imagination. It was real. What happened to it? You know why I don't tell this to everybody? They don't believe it. But I know I had a hard in me. That, that was the next time I was 22 years old. That three times I still didn't know I had a guardian angel. There's one more experience I'm writing in the book that will come in book number two. But I know when I began to read Psalm, or when God spoke to my heart about Psalm 91, I knew I had to preach about the guardian angel. And I know I had to share my story with not only my congregation, but with the world that will see the miracles of God. I don't care if they believe it or not. I'm not Ripley. <laughs> and you're not either. So they can take it or leave it, believe it or not. But I've got witnesses right here that we're alive today because of the guardian angel. Amen? Just listen when that old tempter comes. Put the word of God right back on him. Put 
your testimony. I belong to God. And you're my testimony. So God got the way of escape for every situation. And sometimes you may need an angel. You may need other methods or something else, a miracle, to keep you out of harm's way. But just know this, that God loves you. And your life is not, it may be in danger, but it's not going to end till God says it's time for you to go. If you've got something in your life to fulfill, fulfill it. If you're ever going to do great things for God, do those great things now. And you just watch. He is your deliverer, your fortress. Your God, your strength, your protector, your savior. And he will always have your best interest to heart. Let's stand for Christ. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for the privilege to preach tonight. Thank you for the time to share with the congregation here, Father, and those that's listening by way of internet. I pray, dear Lord, 